Joining me now, Judge Andrew Napolitano, one of the greatest judges ever, also host of the best podcast on the war in Ukraine, Judging Freedom. Uh, he's a truth teller. Everything he said has been right from day one. The thing is such a dis disaster. But I want to get his thoughts on this uh, Trump debacle trial. Uh, Judge, thanks for being with you. You just got back from Italy. Uh, I did just get back uh, from Italy last night, actually yesterday at noontime, in time to make a three o'clock family dinner for <laughs> Mother's Day in honor of my mom, who in four months turns 99 years old. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> See, anyway, this is... it was a long, exhausting, but very happy day. And uh, my time uh, in Italy, I was just there for four days, was excellent. I gave uh, oh, a lecture very, very well received uh, to several hundred people at the uh, University of Milan on taking rights seriously. Uh, and then about uh, 12 of us academics repaired to a five-star resort and had two or three high-end sessions a day between our use of the spa and our use of the pool and fine <laughs> food and the wonderful atmosphere. It was a great four days. Well, I tell you what, it's, it's always good to get back to the old country. As you know, I'm uh, half Italian. Uh, half German, both my parents' parents came from uh, from all from Italy and all from Germany. So I don't have anything else in me. I just got German and Italian, but my mother was Italian. So uh, <laughs> you know, you you never really get away from those uh, those Italian roots, right? Uh, especially Correct. when your mom's Italian and things things like that. My mom since since passed, but um, you know, she had a couple trips to Italy, and uh, they they always talked fondly of it and. Of course, uh, you know, the, <laughs> I don't want to get into their, uh, I used to talk, they used to talk about the war and Mussolini and he made the trains run on time. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Are you kidding me? You guys got, I mean, that was the dumbest thing that Italy ever did. But back then, you know, they had, they had their, they had their believers. Okay, judge, um, let's get to Trump's trial. Uh, let's, let's get to that in New York. What a clown show. Give me your thoughts. Well, today is make or break, or begins, he'll probably be on all week, uh, begins the make or break time uh, for the government. The government heretofore has laid out, has, has set the table, uh, set the stage. Now it's presenting the piece de resistance from their perspective. So this is the government's chief witness, Trump's former lawyer, uh, Michael Cohen. Trump's former confidant and known in, in the New York City circles as the fixer. When Trump had a problem, whether it was legal, political, uh, PR, or even financial, he, he went to Michael Cohen. So you're talking about somebody that knows the former president uh, and the way he thinks and acts very well. Cohen will testify that he and Trump concocted this plot uh, in order to save uh, the campaign. If the jury believes Cohen, then under New York law, there is enough evidence to convict. If Cohen, however, is demolished on cross-examination, then Trump will not have to take the witness stand and the defense won't even have to present a case and the whole case could be over uh, by early next week. Why and how would uh, Cohen be demolished? Well, he has a lot of uh, baggage. Uh, he was sentenced to three years in federal prison for lying under oath uh, and for uh, financial crimes uh, of his own. Uh, will a jury believe uh, a person who's already been convicted of lying under oath and who's publicly uh, expressed animosity and hatred uh, for the person against whom he's testifying? That's what it's going to come down to. From a technical legal perspective, uh, this testimony will determine whether or not the former president has to take the stand. If he takes the stand, that will be very, very dangerous for him because the government can ask him anything that affects his credibility, even beyond what he testifies to uh, in this case. If he doesn't take the stand, that will be a signal to those of us who monitor these things that the defense believes that they have demolished Cohen uh, and that uh, they don't even need to put a serious case on. We'll, we'll, we'll have a handle on this by the end of the week. What's your gut tell you? Uh, you know, I have, I have interviewed Michael Cohen, so I know him. He is a, a 
tenacious uh, and smart guy. Uh, I think he's very dangerous uh, for the former uh, president. However, uh, Todd Blanche, who is the chief lawyer, uh, is a superb cross-examiner and knows how to do it. I can't tell you which way it's going to go, that is, whether the jury will believe Michael Cohen or not, uh, until after I uh, get a feel for his testimony. I'll tell you this, though. Here's, here's one of the charges. A charge is an explanation of the law that the judge gives the jury. Here's one of the charges uh, that Trump's lawyers will request and will receive. When, when this is asked for, judges must give it, and that's this. Uh, members of the jury, if you believe uh, the testimony is uh, in equipoise, if you believe that the allegations against uh, the former president are equal in strength to the defenses he has presented, then you must find him not guilty. Because, members of the jury, the government must prove guilt, which means every element of the crime, beyond a reasonable doubt and to a moral certainty. Even if you think the defendant is guilty or probably was guilty, if the proofs are not beyond a reasonable doubt or if all things are equal, you must find the defendant not guilty. Now, the government hates that charge, but uh, the court will give it if the defense asks for it. And that's the hook on which uh, Trump's people will hang their hat. Before the closing arguments are made, The court has what's called a charging conference in which the court with counsel uh, reviews the charges, the explanation of the law. I realize that charge means different things to different people. It's an old fashioned use of the word charge. Um, uh, So that before closing argument, the lawyers know what the judge's explanation will be. So Todd Blanche can say uh, in a few hours when I'm finished and the government is finished and the judge starts explaining the law to you. He's going to tell you if they have failed to prove everything beyond a reasonable doubt and to a moral certainty, even if you think there's some evidence of guilt, even if you hate the defendant, even if you think he probably got away with something, you still must find him not guilty. Uh, That's a very powerful argument for uh, Trump's lawyers to make. You know, see, they uh, have to keep him off the witness stand at all costs. You and I know him. Personally, I've known him for 40 years. He, uh, he is, he is um, a superb uh, spokesman for the ideas he believes in. He's the, the great uh, political uh, phenomenon of our era, even perhaps greater than Reagan. Uh, but he is not disciplined when it comes to just answering questions briefly. Uh, and he'll talk himself down a rabbit hole that'll be very difficult to get out of. So they really have to keep him off the stand at, at nearly all costs. Well, uh, when this started, you predicted that uh, as um, even though it was tough to get a unbiased jury pool, you pr- you predicted that Trump would get exonerated. Do you still believe that he would be found not guilty? Do you still believe that today? I have to wait and see. Well, if the if the if the case went to the jury today, I don't think he'd be convicted. Right. Uh, but I have to wait to see, A, uh, how uh, compelling uh, Michael Cohen's testimony is, and B, how destructive of Cohen uh, Todd Blanche's uh, cross-examination is. So I'll have an answer for you on this a week from today, because by then, uh, the direct examination and the cross-examination of uh, Mr. Cohen should be complete. I tell you what, um, look at the polling numbers, though, Judge. This thing has backfired on the Democrats in a well, way that polling. no one would have predicted. I mean, it is. Blo- Look at the New York Times poll today. I mean, it's stunning. I mean, people are, are like when you look at this, it was like, oh, my God, if he gets a conviction. Now you look at it, and you say if he gets convicted and they try to put him in jail, what his poll numbers would go up again. So Agreed. where did the where did the yeah. Democrats go with this? I don't know where the Democrats are going to go unless Barack Obama is going to talk Joe Biden into retirement. <laughs> But, you know, yesterday at this Mother's Day dinner, one of my brothers uh, was telling me that uh, two of my cousin's sons uh, went to the Trump rally on the beach in Wildwood, New Jersey. Uh, This is the rally he held, I believe, on Saturday of this past weekend. John, there were 100,000 people there. Now, this is Kennedy-esque. I remember JFK had about 
90,000 people in downtown Philadelphia the Saturday before Election Day in 1960. It's a long time ago, obviously. Uh, but get, getting crowds of that magnitude in New Jersey, a state that has not voted uh, for a Democrat for president um, in, in 30 years uh, is mind-boggling. So this stuff in the courtroom uh, may be causing the former president sleepless nights and a fortune in legal fees but it is helping him at the polls. 100,000 people in Wildwood. Of course, um, I grew up in New Jersey, so I know, I know where that is. It's you like you can't... I, I, oh, you can't. Why they, I wondered why they came to New Jersey. They either think that they can uh, win in a landslide if they can flip a state like New Jersey, or they think that the local uh, television and radio publicity will help them in, in Philadelphia because it's all the Philadelphia stations down there that uh, cover Wildwood. For those that don't know what we're talking about, we're all the way down at the bottom tip of New Jersey now. We're 40 miles south of Atlantic City, so it's the Philadelphia media market. It's not the New York media market. No, it's the Philadelphia media market. And the thing is, those of, those of us that live in Jersey, like you, I grew, I grew up there, went to college there, uh, you can't get there from anywhere. I mean, you got, there's like two two ways to get there. You can take the Atlantic City Expressway and then go south, or you take the Garden State Parkway or Route 9 with like 90 billion lights. You can't get there. So to have 100,000 right. people where somewhere you can't get to, or you got to take right. the ferry up from Cape May, uh, if you're coming from uh, Maryland or Delaware, I, Yes, it is. You got right. you, you, and, you, and, and it was raining. And according to my cousin's <laughs> sons, half the hundred thousand people were there before the sun came up. The <laughs> rally was at this time. Unbelievable. Uh, I was uh, I was out. Of, I was in trying to give West... you some happy some happy news to sort of balance out the the dry, boring legal analysis. <laughs> it's <case>. happy news. <laughs> so. Uh, Judging freedom, you got to get to that. Um, now Zelensky, like they don't have any troops. Now, 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 what are they? In 20, 30 seconds, what does he do? He doesn't have any tr troops now. He uh, takes his money and runs. He has no troops left. And, and you know, uh, as of May 20th, he's out of office. I don't know what the heck he's going to do. If he's just gonna, that's when his term is over. That's a week from today. I don't think he's given much thought to it, at least not publicly. <laughs> You've been right about that from day one. What a total debacle. Uh, we got sucked into, into that thing. They have no no plan. Unbelievable. More money down the down the drain. Grift. Judging Freedom, baby. Got to go to that. Hey, comes out. Uh, comes out today at 4, 4 o'clock. Judging Freedom. One of the best podcasts ever. Judge, thanks for being with, with us. Uh, for... Thank you, my man. All the best. See you next Monday. All right. I'll see you then.